All right, now we are moving on to module three with surfaces. We are going to be making curves here in step one, which we will then loft those together to actually make a surface out of those curves that we drew. And then from there, we will be making a series of curves, which we will loft together, and then we will connect them here in the center. And so this is a very useful tool to use uh, in general for creating surfaces, organic surfaces such as this, um, in which we can use um, that is a very unique command to Rhino. So let's go ahead and actually, this one is uh, a pavilion in which uh, does not seem to have uh, any particular plan to model off of, so we can actually just practice and try to recreate uh, this practice model, which I have uh, created here. So let's go ahead and start making our curves first. Go into a front view. Let's use our curve commands to draw some curves. And these can be just about any sort of curves you can think of. Let's make one there. We'll make a smaller one there. And we will make a larger one of all of that. Let's go ahead and put these on a different layer. Module three practice. We will put this below, connect it into that surface. And so we actually have our steps here. So let's leave that out. We'll leave that minimized. Okay, so now let's make this practice layer current. Let's change all of these to our module three practice. Mm, there we go. Great, so let's go into our top, our perspective view actually. So here's our curves. Let's go ahead and bring some of those out. Right? You can make any sort of curves you can imagine. Uh, they can be a series of curves uh, that are supposed to have a purpose, or they can be any sort of curve you can imagine. Let's go ahead and bring this over here and make a copy. Hold Alt, use a gumball, and make copy. And now we will actually type in the command loft. And you'll get some options in which you can control how to create your loft. For now, we'll just use the defaults. Let's click OK. And here you can see how those series of curves that we created actually come together to make a surface. And so you can imagine just about any kind of curve you can create, any series of curves. And there can be more than just a few curves, right? So we can we'll make another copy. And we will make a couple copies here and let's go ahead and select all of these and loft again and now we have a series of lofted surfaces connected together and these all act as one and they when created they actually act separate from the curves so if you wanted to do this uh, there are multiple ways you can approach this once you create it you can actually group it all together and then once you move that everything moves or you can actually put your created surface and curves on different layers. So then that way you can actually control when to turn them on and off. So what we can do is from here, you can really kind of make any sort of shape you can imagine. And so right now I'll actually pause and let you make a similar shape to this, make any sort of curves you can imagine. And can rotate them. There can be five limbs. There can be six, seven limbs, as many as you want. And um, we will continue with what you have created. And I should mention uh, for this, um, I'm making curves and making copies of curves. Uh, and then I am actually kind of offsetting them, giving them a little bit of an element of randomness to them. Some I'm actually deleting. and some of them spreading out, right? So that you can get 
many different curves. Some you can actually skew. I use the gumball and just skew that and skew this one, right? So you can really quickly kind of customize them, loft them, and make a surface. And usually I like to make the ends a little bit larger openings so it can actually indicate almost like a sort of entrance here as I zoom into this example object here. You can see it kind of creates a sort of entrance, so I like to make those a little bit bigger. Okay, and so I made some curves, and I'm actually going to array polar. Can pick a center and select number of items. I'm going to do six and select the first rotation. And this is going to be, I'm putting 120. That was not correct. And let's, we'll try a different angle, but you can try um, a couple angles and try and get the right one until they uh, array around correctly. Another way could be to simply rotate and copy. And pick a center, and you can actually kind of custom rotate and just make copies like this. That might be this way. Okay, and so now that we have uh, kind of our series of shapes here, we can actually go ahead and begin to loft these. So let's click this one and loft, right? And normally you'd have some that are a little more different than others. So the more you select and you loft, they will all loft together. So we can be come further away like this, right? So go ahead and loft all these together. And then once you've done that, you will actually create a centerpiece for all of these to come there, to come into. Okay, so now that we have our surfaces created, we can actually go ahead and patch this together. So we will use our patch command to create this. So you can go up, come up here to the ribbon under surface creation and click on patch, or we can simply just type in patch. So select curves to patch these two. So we'll go ahead and select all our curves. And once we do that, we can patch all these together. And it'll create a surface here in the middle. So click enter. And it's going to give us some settings. Let's go ahead and just use the defaults for now. And so now we actually have a very large surface and it patches them all together in the best possible way. And so since these are so close together, it lofted quite a large surface here up top. So what we want to do now is actually trim this so that we have something similar condition to the original example. So what we can do is go up to our top view. Let's make a regular rectangular surface. Right? So again, we're going to use our split command. We can select the objects that we want to split. We want to select, we want to split our patched object. So we'll click that first, click enter, click our cutting objects, our surface. Let's click enter again. So now, if we did this right, you can go into the front view and we should be able to select all of this and simply delete it. And so there, now we have our patched surface, our tent-like structure, similar to the pavilion at the Serpentine Pavilion. And that is an introduction to lofted surfaces and uh, using curves um, in Rhino.